Hey guys, Lefty back here again and thanks for checking out the video. So this is actually going to be my third time recording this video. I recorded it a couple times earlier. Didn't like the way it turned out so I'm uh, back at it again. So uh, today though we're going to be talking about some pretty interesting topic, really somewhat of a more interesting topic than usual, which is going to be how to run right-handed guns as a left-hander. Um, I'm going to be using a standard Glock 17 Gen 3. Uh, there are no ambi features on this gun as probably most of you know. Um, this is actually a very old Gen 3 Glock 19. It still has the kind of the uh, the Teflon finish on the slide too. So and it still has the shitty Glock sights too. So that's pretty fun. So that's what we're going to be using as kind of the demo gun about how to run right-handed guns as a left-hander. And I'm going to go into simple details about how I do it and give you some maybe other options if you don't really like the way I do it and maybe you know just kind of a helpful tutorial video. And uh, one thing as well, it's not a tactics video. It's a simple how-to. I'm not going to tell you when you should do this or when you should do that. It's just a simple, if you need to do this, this is how I do it, right? So yeah, let's get right into it. Okay, first and foremost, I'm going to treat this like this is a gunfight, meaning once I have my hand on this gun, the hand is sticking to this gun. I'm not going to be doing no range thing where I'm switching hands, and I'm not going to be kind of breaking my grip to the nth degree where it seems, you know, a little bit ridiculous. So... I'm going to treat it like a gunfight, and once my hand is on this gun, like I just drew out of the holster or whatever, uh, it's going to be glued onto this bitch, right? It's not moving, at least not much. So the first thing that we're going to cover is mag release, and this is a little bit of an overblown uh, thing here. So basically the way I like to do it, use my middle finger. You can also use your index finger as well. Uh, just make sure in whatever method, whatever finger you're using, that you're using in a very... A uh, simple manner, you're using a very quick, very concise movement. I'm not moving my hand too much, and I'm not breaking my grip as a result. Now, some people might see this and be like, well, you're, you're kind of compromising your grip a little bit. And this is somewhat true, but if I'm right-hander, right, I'm going to have to spin the gun just a little bit in order to reach that mag release. Obviously, if you have hands that are way bigger than mine, because I don't really have that big of hands, you know, you can probably just reach the mag release, right? Uh, but most people are probably going to have to break their grip in some degree. So that's kind of the main in my, uh, my personal preference when it comes to the mag release. It's just using my, my middle finger, right? Uh, it doesn't compromise my grip too much, and it's very easy. And also with regards to the magazine, right? I know I'm using the Gen 3, but let's say you're using a Gen 4. I would highly, highly, highly recommend that you keep the mag release on the left side of the gun. Uh, for a couple reasons. One... Any gun that I pick up that's obviously going to be more right-handed oriented, I can run it because I'm going to be used to hitting that mag release with um, my middle finger index or however you want to do it. Um, obviously, you have some of the German ones that are the paddle style, which obviously it doesn't apply to that, but most guns are going to be either ambi or on the left side of the gun. So doing this allows you to pick up any gun and run it normally without having too much of a change in your grip or a change of manual of operation or anything like that. Uh, another thing, too, is that it opens up your catalog, right? So if I'm not looking for ambi features like ambi mag releases or ambi uh, slide stops or any of this sort, I can pick pretty much any handgun that I want, right? I'm not kind of pigeon held to a certain uh, manufacturer or a certain model just for ambi features. So that's a huge bonus that I would recommend uh, to keeping the mag release on the left side of the gun. All right, so another technique at releasing the magazine here is uh, I guess it depends uh, how you actually grip the firearm. Uh, me, I get a high, high grip with the dominant hand, and the support hand is going to wrap around like this. Uh, the index finger is going to fall into this little pocket, which I'll explain the technique a little bit later. But then the dominant hand, or excuse me, the support hand is going to wrap the dominant hand. Uh, thumb goes very aggressively uh, around it, and thumb presses down on the little edge here, and that's just kind of how I run it. So if you run your grip similar to this, you can actually use this technique where my index finger is going to fall right between my index and my middle finger on my dominant hand. <clears throat> and then that actually allows me to hit the magazine release uh, when I want to. It's not in such a manner that I'm going to inadvertently activate it, right? But when I need to, so let's say I press the trigger, bang, gun goes dry, roll it, magazine drops, and you can get a new one in and uh, run the slide. So same thing, I'm going to press out. Gun goes dry, get a new mag, cycle that bitch, and you're back. Alright, so that pretty much covers the magazine release, not much to it. 
Um, hopefully people that were kind of struggling with it a little bit got some ideas about maybe how to operate it or maybe tweak theirs, what they're doing currently. Um, I don't really know too many other techniques that are actually viable that I haven't shown right there. So if you got one that works for you, hey, rock it. You know, I, I don't really care. It's whatever works for you. You know, maybe you have a disability. Maybe you have certain things with your hands. You can't do certain things. So every technique is not going to work the same for everybody. So, so with slide release, uh, we technically don't need to learn how to operate it with the exception of malfunctions. So when we get a type three double feed malfunction, right, we're gonna need to learn how to lock the slide into the rear. And the way I do that is I'm actually gonna use my index of my dominant hand, right? So say my gun goes click rather than bang, I'm just gonna lock the slide into the rear. Now that is my preferred way of doing it. There are a couple other techniques of doing it. Uh, another one is kind of reaching over. This is a little bit trickier, right? If you have like a subcompact or even a Glock 19, it's a little sketch, but you can reach back and uh, do that. So basically, you're gonna bring your hand pretty much right over the breech, right about here, and then just take your finger and lock it back. It's not terrible, um, but when we actually cover uh, malfunction clearances left-handed, um, you know, one of the techniques is obviously going to be to run the gun off the belt and then lock it to the rear. So that's a little bit of an issue. So I think uh, doing it my way is probably the best in my opinion, at least for locking the slide to the rear. Now again, it's not gonna work for everybody. So if it works for you, great. And maybe it helped you uh, be able to run these because a lot of left-handers are gonna be doing this sort of thing, right? We're, which, you know, is pretty common, especially in kind of the range atmosphere where it's very, nonchalant, whatever, but uh, I prefer to kind of stick to one technique or method and uh, just keep kind of drilling that into my brain, right? So now we're going to actually go over the slide man manipulation or the the slide release, I guess if you want to call it a slide stop, for maybe reloading the weapon, right? So let's say we get the last round fired, gun goes click, or excuse me, bang, slide reciprocates, gets locked to the rear. So, this is where, you know, there, even in, you know, kind of the right-handed world, right, there's a lot of kind of discussion about maybe what should you do. Should you do the slingshot method or maybe just the tap in and then rack it backward? Or maybe you should just do, you know, obviously the, the slide release. It, it doesn't really matter whatever way you want to run it. Um, you know, it's, it's, if it works for you, it's not necessarily the wrong way, right? So I'm just going to show you a couple methods and ideas. Maybe if you're kind of stuck on one, you're on the fence, you know, maybe can give you a little bit more of an idea. So my way, uh, gun goes bang, locks to the rear. Going to hit the slide release, right? Or excuse me, hit the mag release, get a new magazine in. And since my hand is already in this position, all I'm going to do is essentially rotate the gun over and run the slide like that. Now you can just rotate it over and run, run the slide like that, makes really no difference. Um, however, I find that the Glock, especially with Glocks, because the rear serrations are kind of eh, and especially uh, depending on the finish, you know, they're, they're, pretty, they're pretty slick and if your hands are sweaty, bloody, muddy, whatever, it's kind of hard to get a grip. So I prefer to use a little bit more, a little bit more meat on the hand. So that would be my preferred method. Of course, you know, doing the slingshot method is still, is still viable as well. Now, that's pretty much how I would recommend uh, reloading the gun, right? Um, even if we're doing speed shooting, it's very simple. It's a very gross motor skill oriented movement. I don't have to try to hit a little button, right? It's, it's very, you know, magazine in, seat it, run the slide, and it's good to go. Um, that's, that's my preferred way. And another thing, too, is because, uh, again, when we get into malfunction clearances, when I lock to the slide to the rear, if I get a double feed, um, strip the mag, I'm going to rack it, and that motion is exactly the same as actually loading it, right? So I'm just building, I'm building commonalities, I'm building muscle memory, if you want to call it that. Uh, and, and then another reason too why we rotate the gun, right? So if we actually have a double feed malfunction where we have two rounds trying to go into the chamber, um, not only are we going to rack that bitch, right, but we're also trying to use gravity as a as an assist right so i'm not going to try to you know rack it like this right because i'm not right-handed all that's going to do is probably fuck it up even more and also too we'll cover this 
a malfunction clearances as well, but you, know, you want to make sure that you're not getting your hand over the top of it too much, like grabbing up here, right? Because uh, uh, when your hand is covering the breech, obviously things can't get out, right? So just, just be aware of that. <clears throat> Uh, another technique that I'm actually a really big fan of, uh, it's a little bit more of a range or a kind of a speed shooting fun technique. It's, it's similar to an AR reload, which we'll cover eventually as well. Um, so basically on the AR-15, we have the bolt catch pretty much almost in the same spot. It would obviously be a little bit more forward, right? But similar things would apply. So uh, let's say I shoot my AR, bolt goes to the rear, strip the mag out, get a new mag in, and if I actually reach over, I can actually touch that bolt release, right? And I can do a similar method with the Glock. So, let's say, boom, goes dry, mag release, I put a new mag in, reach over, hit that, uh, hit the slide catch, or slide stop, excuse me, and since my hand, it's kind of a cool little thing that happens, and it feels pretty good, you guys are going to have to try it out. I, uh, I do like this technique a lot. It's going to take a little while, probably, to find that kind of that spot where, the, your, where your slide stop is, but, you know, if you get really good at it, you can get it going pretty, pretty fast, right? Well, if I'm in camera, or I'm in frame, uh, but it's kind of cool because when I insert the magazine right, my hand comes over the top, right, and my hand's kind of in this position at the moment, right, and so all I have to do is curl the hand in, and then extend out. So it's a very it's a very fast movement, right? It's not probably not as fast as this, or at least not as consistent, I will say. But you know, if you get good at it, it's it's pretty decent. So that's another technique that uh, that you guys can kind of play with around, play around with, and see if you like it or not. Um, another method too that I've seen is a pretty popular method. I don't like it because I just can't do it with my my hand size and probably other certain things, but is to actually use the mag release, or excuse me, use the slide release with your dominant hand. For me, I have to break too much of my grip off to get it, just feels odd to me, and then I have to reestablish it. I, I would much rather insert mag, hand is stuck in this position, rack the gun, and then press, right? That's just, that's just my personal preference. It's, it's faster and it's a little bit less uh, dependent on my dominant hand um, because after I run a slide I'm, I want to be able to take a shot if possible right I don't want to have to reorient my hand here and do this because obviously for whatever reason right if I'm if I'm dropping my mag out it's probably because it's empty so I don't really care that my hands in a little bit of a uh, compromised position because I can rebuild it instantly and then get the uh, magazine back in the gun and get it up and run it again. So that's pretty much it. I am um, probably missed a couple of things. Probably a few smaller details that some people also use as well. Um, you know, if you have a technique or a method that works well for you, drop it in the comments, you know, get a discussion going or whatever. Um, I will be trying to do more videos like this, maybe with the, uh, uh, definitely with the AR and the AK platform. I think those are some of the two more popular uh, weapons, at least in America that you know people should know how to run the basics through them and then also I want to be able to do some malfunction clearances uh, with these weapons so you know you'll get another uh, if all goes well and these videos are popular enough probably about five more episodes on this kind of topic so it should be a pretty interesting pretty fun little series I got going so anyway I want to thank all my subscribers uh, I think we're up to like 112 at this moment uh, it's, it's crazy don't really make too many videos on this uh, channel, but it's growing pretty good. So I want to thank you to all the guys that subscribed and continue to watch and like and favor and all that stuff. It means a lot. It gives me a little bit more purpose and a little bit more drive to make these kind of videos and hopefully help people out. Because um, again, I don't really want to come off as a as a know it all. I'm just a person that's into guns, likes to shoot, like self defense and all this other stuff, and I'm just trying to help people that are maybe looking for it. So anyway, thank you guys for watching and uh, be good.